What's up everyone, Mariah here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the six ways that fasting ruined my life, effed up my life, however you want to say it. And I think this video is really important because there's not enough videos out there about it. And at times it can be very difficult to describe the way fasting has um, played a negative role in my life. I'm not going to lie, there are positives when it comes to fasting, but as time goes on and it's been, or I'm approaching seven months post-fast, and I still feel like I'm in the healing process of fasting. I didn't expect it to be this long. I didn't expect to be still making videos about it, honestly. I would have anticipated that I would have been done making videos about my 54 day long fast, but I'm still feeling the effects of it, the positives and negatives. It honestly feels mostly more like negatives. And so today I'm gonna to be sharing those six things with you. If this is your first time here, um, at the end of September 2018, I embarked on a 54 day long fast. It was originally, originally gonna be 30 days, it turned into 54. Here I am with you today, giving you the dark side, um, the things that most people won't talk about because people have an agenda when it comes to fasting. I'm not really sure why, but they do. And you know, I'm here to say that I think fasting can be good, but there are cons, and if you fast too long, there's even more cons, so beware. Um, you know, like I mentioned, I never thought that I'd still be talking about the 54 day long fast, but here I am. I first wanna say that I take full responsibility for fasting that long. No one told me to fast that long. Um, I went out on YouTube, I watched multiple videos, I decided that I wanted to embark on a fasting journey. I went as long as I did because of me. No one pushed me there. Cole Robinson did not push me to go 54 days. I chose it myself. I didn't even get into contact with him until 40 days. I don't blame anyone or anything for the decisions that I've made. Are there people out there that I truly believe um, are not giving people the full picture of fasting and only the pros 100% and I'm not cool with that and that's why I'm here making this video today. Um, I also wanted to mention that I don't want others to feel the pain that I've experienced. Um, I don't want anyone to experience that and that's why I am speaking my truth today and talking about these specific uh, cons when it comes to fasting. Um, I feel qualified to talk about the dark side because I've actually experienced it. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I did hear a lot about the dark side of fasting, but it was from people that never fasted before. And it was really difficult to take their, their, uh, their words seriously or with any merit because of the simple fact that they had never experienced it for themselves. Well, now you can read from people that have not done it and here you are today getting this you know, information from someone who has actually fasted themselves. Um, at the end of the day, I just wanna say with fasting that people need to tread lightly. I did not tread lightly. Um, I did OMAD for a month. I did a 48-hour um, fast and then I believe a 78-hour fast and then I jumped right into 54 days. I think it's highly, highly important to tread lightly when it comes to fasting. Um, and you know, I think slowing it down is the best way to go. Even though I know for me specifically, that'd be really hard to take because I'm either all in or all, all out. I can't like do something in moderation, clearly. So um, the first way that fasting ruined my life. I use, you know, I don't really like to, first of all, use the word ruined, mainly because the fact that when I, when I hear the word ruined, I think that it's not repairable. I feel like I am repairable. The things, the negative things that happen to me, they are repairable. Um, when I say effed up, um, I feel like that, um, like I said, ruined. It's like not repairable, but when I say effed up, I'm like, it is repairable. So um, that's why I don't necessarily like to use the word ruined, but honestly, I think that people were intrigued by that word and that's why I started to use it. Um, so the first way that fasting um, effed up my life is there was a lot of days, and I'm happy to say that I'm pretty much past this, that I was just feeling really challenged, and I thought to myself, this is really challenging. I feel like I'm in a hole. Um, I don't know how to crawl out of this hole, and it would be really, really easy to escape this situation. And the only way I was like to get out of this situation would be hey, it would be so nice if I just didn't wake up in the morning. And that's like so sad and such a dark place to be in, but that was, that was how dark it got. I would, you know, I would say it, like honestly, like it got to that point. I'm glad to say that I'm out of it. I'm glad to say that I woke up, but that thought crossed my mind 
way too many times. Not that I was gonna put any action behind it, but just a thought like, wow, this is exhausting mentally, physically exhausting. It'd be nice to just not wake up in the morning. Um, the second way that it effed up my life would be, um, it made my binge eating a hundred times worse. Um, it made my former binge eating look so minimal and like absolutely nothing. Um, it made my urges to binge in all the previous years look like absolutely nothing. Um, it made it worse. It made it so much worse, like off the charts worse. Um, not only were the binges worse, but the urges to binge were incredibly terrible. Um, it's hard to describe. I feel like before I thought that I had a binge eating disorder and it really wasn't that. It was probably more of just overeating. Um, and then it turned into full on uh, disorder, binge eating disorder. Um, not, not a good time, not a good thing, not something that I anticipated to experience. I went into fasting thinking that it was going to cure it, that it was going to help me, and I was completely, completely wrong. Number three, it amplified my anxiety around food and my social anxiety. I really didn't have anxiety before doing uh, this whole fasting thing. No anxiety. Um, maybe a little bit when I had my business a few years ago, uh, which just like the stress would maybe cause some anxiety, but nothing like I experience now. The amount of anxiety I had around food, um, it's still present. It was worse, but it's been better. Honestly, what's insane to think is that a lot of these issues have gone away since I have returned to my original weight after the fast. I feel like my mind was doing anything and everything that it could to get me back to the original weight. Whether it was amplifying the anxiety, amplifying the binge eating, the urges to binge, whatever it needed to get back to the original weight. And now that it's there, mentally it's easier, um, I, hate, I hate to say. Um, it also really played a toll on my social anxiety. So, you know, I put a target on my back and I put myself in a worse position by being very, very social about my fast, uh, or being public uh, about my fast. And so I made social anxiety a very present thing in my life for a period of time. It's still there. Um, it's not in the forefront of my mind, thankfully, but it is there and it is still present. Um, Basically, it was in terms of, okay, I'm gonna go see this person, you know, am I, uh, I'm bigger than the last time they saw me and how are they going to interpret that or think about that and is it gonna be the first thing that crosses their mind as soon as they see me? Um, so the social anxiety got a lot worse. Um, you know, I would say that a lot of people have reached out to me saying that they've experienced depression after the fast. You know what, I didn't feel like that um, I feel like I was more depressed when I was uh, going to college. Um, that's one of the reasons why I ended up dropping out. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't feel like that was a prevalent thing during um, this time after the fast. Um, next, it made it very difficult to connect again. It made it difficult to connect with people, engage in conversation. It made it difficult to connect with nature. It made it difficult for me to connect with the things that bring joy in my life. It was almost like, you know, let's say I was in a moment. Um, like, here's a good example. I'd have this really amazing experience. Um, and I'm always in the person that, it could be something small, but if it's something new, it like makes my heart feel full. It makes my soul feel full. It makes like, it brings so much excitement and gratitude to me. Like it's like a full body experience and things that should have done that to me weren't quite doing that. Um, I was experiencing it less fre frequently than normal. So an example is I took an amazing sailing trip back in February and although I felt so much gratitude and there were a couple moments um, when I was in the water that I, I felt that full body like gratitude, joy, happiness, appreciation. Um, it just didn't happen as frequently and maybe as deeply as I would have expected. So um, 
I, I would say that I did have a moment recently when I went, went back to California to surprise my mom for Mother's Day when I got to check a huge thing off my bucket list and go to the USA Women's National Soccer Game at Levi Stadium in a suite um, because of my amazing friend who hooked that up. That brought me a ton of joy and it was like, you know, I'm trying to get back to those childlike things. So for me, I knew that that was gonna bring me a ton of joy because one, it was on my bucket list for two decades and it was like tapping into like the things that made me really joyful as a child. And I feel like tapping into those things is something that I'm trying to be more aware of. And those are the things that I'm able to like connect more with. So, so yeah, just like finding that complete wholesome joy in my life has been incredibly challenging. Um, and it's something that just makes me feel so full that I need it in my life because I've experienced it a few times. Like I've experienced it in moments of, um, you know, riding in a helicopter for the first time, overlooking Las Vegas at night. Um, I've experienced it skydiving. Um, I've experienced it walking the red carpet at the Grammys. Um, I have experienced it um, when I won a car on The Price is Right. I've experienced it um, when I've been able to do things for other people, like take them on trips with me that I've won. Um, like I got to take my cousin to a Dallas Cowboys game that I, I won a trip to and just like then seeing that with other people too. Um, and so yeah, just I'm trying to like reconnect with the joy, things that brought me joy as a child and I am finding more success really f like feeling that joy. Um, and lastly, it made me more self-centered and I hate that. Um, I feel like before I was a more thoughtful person, it made me think of other people more frequently and oftentimes first. It made me like, I really enjoyed serving people in a sense, um, you know, and I feel like during my fast, I was extremely self-centered. It was more about like me. And then afterwards, and I don't know if it's like a survival thing um, that my body kind of went into, but it's like hard to be mindful of other people around and truly just like not be so damn self-centered. <laughs> like I don't want to be self-centered, but at times I feel like I'm self-centered, but I'm also aware that I might be like extra hard on myself when it comes to this topic. So I talked about not wanting to wake up in the morning. Um, I talked about making binge eating worse. I talked about it amplifying my anxiety uh, around food and social anxiety. I talked about um, it making it more difficult to connect with people and making it making me a more self-centered person. So um, if you want to see more videos in detail about the dark side of fasting, go ahead and leave a comment below. If this is your first time here and you're interested in fasting and you're interested in taking that step and experimenting with fasting or different forms of fasting, um, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, the bell for notifications. I always appreciate all the love and support. So as always, I hope that you have an absolutely amazing day and go out there and create a life that you love.